um, I want to, John Schnur is going to speak next, and I just want to uh, put a highlight on something Morley and Mike talked about, because I think it's very germane. There's many things they just went through that are very germane for those of us trying to interpret what's happening in this election. But when I was born in 1963 at Lenox Hill Hospital, not too far away from here, the country was 11% or 89% white and 10.5% uh, minority and 0.5% other, and I still don't know what the 0.5% other was. Uh, but in this this year, the country is 66% white, 33% uh, uh, minority. We, we are going through, uh, led by this generation, probably the single most significant demographic change in the history of the country since the Europeans arrived here in the 16th and 17th century. And I think that that enormous transition of this country from a white, black, majority, minority, uh, and what was a uh, relationship which was exploitive, pernicious, frankly, morally reprehensible for most of our history, to now one where diversity is becoming something very different and where intolerance of intolerance is growing, right, with this young, young generation, is creating a very, is I think in part creating the conditions where an African-American man would actually have the audacity to run and potentially become the next president of the United States. And so there really, this issue of diversity and intolerance of intolerance and their acceptance of otherness is really, I think, playing out already in a very powerful way in this election and I think is a critical thing we'll talk about a little bit in the Q&A. So John, welcome. Thank you. Take it away. Uh, great to be here and I will, um, I'm uh, very excited to be part of this conversation um, for a number of reasons and I'll be brief so we can get into a discussion, but I've known um, Simon for a, a long time, and uh, and Morley, and uh, and had my background in the Clinton administration, working on education policy. But I have been, um, I started and lead a nonprofit social enterprise called New Leaders for New Schools, and we're dedicated to transforming urban public education. In our case, through finding and training the next generation of outstanding principals to turn around low achieving, low income schools. But I also work very closely with a kind of a set of leaders. Um, some people call social entrepreneurs, um, who are focused on uh, both transforming education and through the national service movement and others trying to really um, be part of changing our society in a um, sort of outside of government, working with government um, way. Um, and one of the things that I'm really excited about um, the being here tonight, Simon, has been part of conversations about how do we bring in a set of leaders and movements um, and, and, and really then generations that we're partly leading into the discussions um, that you're having here around um, politics, society, um, more broadly. Um, and uh, so the set of institutions, Teach for America, obviously all of you know, we work very closely with um, Wendy Kopp, a Teach for America, who's a classmate of mine a long time ago. Um, and uh, Alan Casey started an organization called City Year. You're familiar with Alan. Um, and City Year has been so crucial in being the model for AmeriCorps and bringing a whole generation of Americans into service. Um, Public Allies um, was started by Vanessa Kirsch, um, a friend of Simon's. Um, in fact, reflecting both um, actually the Clintons and the Obamas' engagement <laughs> in service, because Michelle Obama, yeah. as Simon knows, um, Vanessa recruited a long while back to be the executive director of Public Allies in Chicago. Yeah. It's a very important part, part of that. Um, but there's a set of these institutions that I think have, we've, we've seen some window I think, onto um, the millennial generation and, the, and uh, social entrepreneurs tapping them. And I want to share a few insights about what we've seen um, and then open it up more for, uh, for Alicia and then for discussion um, to the extent that, that you want to go more in depth into this. But I think we've seen some interesting um, things. By the way, Justin, where is, is Justin here? Justin, uh, Justin Rockefeller is here too, and another crucial organization, um, Generation Engage, that Justin has um, co-created and leads, is really tapping into this um, generation in a, in a really important way. But a few things, the, the substantive issue that you know, I've, I've been most involved in is tackling the problem of education reform. And I, this is not a talk on education reform tonight, but I think you all know that, we, uh, that ultimately the kids in the millennial generation coming up are in fact going through public schools that are not really failing to educate our kids at the levels that they need to be. Um, new reports have come out um, that a third of our kids are, gradu are, just, are dropping out before they graduate from high school. A second third graduate from high school but are not prepared actually for college or productive careers. So we really have a third of this generation coming out of high school right now prepared for productive careers and post-secondary education in the 21st century. So we have a massive problem on our hands that we're in the middle of trying to solve. And there are a variety of solutions that I'm very optimistic about with um, 
um, a new kind of politics and a real long-term focus and a social entrepreneurship and uh, the activism of a gen the 80 generation where 80% of the people are getting involved in service, I'm very optimistic about. But the, the lessons that I, I guess I, I, I'm seeing that are relevant are how, in fact, um, uh, the older part of the millennial generation, teens, early mid-20s, um, are tackling this that I think are, in my view, a window um, potentially onto this generation overall. A few things we've seen. One is the, to um, supplement the 80% statistic compared to the 20-some percent of kids who went into community service in, when they graduated in high school from 1984. Although I graduated from 1984, and so I saw, I saw that lack of interest. And it is profoundly different. The level of interest from of people to go into service, to go into teaching, to go into whatever role they can, full-time or part-time, um, in a way that in a, rolling up their sleeves in an action-oriented way to make a difference in society is huge. Teach for America is an example of this. Um, the, uh, uh, it's the largest single employer coming out of um, both Princeton and Spelman last year um, was Teach for America. 10% um, of the Princeton and Spelman classes, um, senior classes, um, applied for Teach for America. Um, there are 20, 15, 10 to 15 times as many applicants um, in Teach for America as there are slots. We see that at New Leaders for New Schools for people who then want to take the next step to become principals. City Year um, is another organization is is overwhelmed with applications of people. I mean, there is this hunger to be engaged, um, generation engaged, um, and, I, and I would add, and focus then on results, which is really tangible. And I'd say that this, that a lot of skepticism until recently toward politics, I think partly because politics has seemed more distant um, from the actual impact that people have wanted. And what we've seen is this willingness to be engaged and really focusing on results. And it is, there's this impatience that we've seen for a lot of ideological um, conflict. Um, there's a, a impatience for um, process, and there's a sense that we're not getting results and wanting to be part of solutions that are getting measurable results. So these movements are not only about engagement and service, as I've seen them, they're about, okay, what are we going to do to not just feel better because we're engaged, um, but actually to get results. We had a, a conversation with, um, Jonathan Alter came with a, a group of us uh, a couple months ago and was talking about you know, his sort of take on the story of trying to figure out how to write about this story. And he was saying, well, isn't this just kind of a resurgence of, in some ways, um, the 1960s with an interest in um, engagement or service for the, for, or the, the uh, post-Peace Corps, Kennedy appeal to service and all the activism that that promoted. And one thing that I heard from a 24-year-old social entrepreneur at a table that was the most important point that I think was made um, for, for Jonathan Alter in writing the story is that this is not about trying to feel better by being engaged in these things. It was about like how do we in the most productive, concrete way actually get results um, in something like trying to change education. And that orientation toward results, I, um, I just think is so crucial and I'm not sure has necessarily come through in some of the um, writings, but I just think it's such a profound part of what we're, we're seeing. And I think that means that there, there is really a, an impatience with um, even sometimes unhealthy, but I think mostly healthy impatience with process um, with conflict, um, and people want to get to results and brass tacks and say, what are we going to do to make change? And I think overall, there's an incredibly healthy energy to tap. And I would say that one of the things that our social enterprises have seen is we've attracted incredible intensity and engagement and interest because we represent that in kind of a blend where one set of institutions, and only one, that represent kind of a public interest, but that sort of are outside government, and therefore I think there's a potential perception that we may be actually more action-oriented and, and committed to results. I think one of the challenges is how to channel that energy and talent in a way that actually is active on a grassroots level, but then I think as we're beginning to see more on a political level. And we've had I say, some important conversations with a lot of the teachers and service corps members coming to these movements about once you get through this, it's so crucial now to leverage this experience you've had and get engaged in, in politics and society more broadly in addition to your own experience. And I think there's some skepticism um, and some hope and I think what happens in the short to medium term around how politics is viewed, I think is going to have a huge impact on whether this generation takes this in interest in engagement and results and change and openness to uh, focus on public good, but a skepticism toward government to actually be involved in kind of the way that's being described here, to actually be part of a realignment of, of politics and government. And I think it's an open question that will depend a lot on what happens in the next, you know, next, next several years. Um, so with that, I guess I'll close and turn it over to the rest of the